the shooting range. In this episode, Pages of History, How Not to Build a Thunderbolt. Triathlon, Comparing Top Helicopters. And Operation Summer, Returning Anew. War Thunder is launching a new operation, Summer 2020. In this event, you'll be getting a lot of rewards. A dozen new decals, four new decorations, and of course, event planes, tanks, and ships. But first things first. The operation will take place between the 7th and 31st of August. To get the rewards, you will need to complete tasks and earn stars. With tanks and aircraft, you can use rank 3 and more vehicles, while for ships, rank 2 and higher will do just fine. Now, more about the main rewards. Earning 5 pilot stars will give you a premium German rank 1 float plane. The Arado 196A3. It's a naval reconnaissance plane used by the Kriegsmarine. However, it does have something to effectively fight off low-rank aircraft. 20mm forward-facing guns. By the way, this peculiar aircraft was created by the players, and not one but two. Nova 29R provided the model, while Joy Division created the cockpit. Now, for 10 pilot stars, you will receive a US Naval Supersonic Rank 6 fighter jet, the F-11 F-1 Tiger. We hope you'll find its four 20mm guns and four air-to-air -air missiles useful in air battles, while some bombs and rockets will help you in mixed battles. Five tanker stars will get you a premium Swedish Rank 2 tank, the IKV-73. This is a modernized STRV M42EH, where the hull-mounted machine gun was removed to get rid of a weak point. When you get to 10 tanker stars, you will receive the German Leopard C2A1 tank with a complex of Mexus composite armor. This Leopard is a balanced main battle tank with good mobility and firepower, as well as additional protection against heat and kinetic rounds. Sailors will receive the Italian Freccia P493 gunboat at five stars. This gunboat's main feature is versatility. It's up to you whether you want to use its torpedo version with 40mm Breda Bofus cannons and two torpedoes or its artillery version with three cannons and no torpedoes. The main award for the sailors unlocked at 10 stars is Maxim Gorky, Soviet light cruiser. This is a modified Kirov-class cruiser with reinforced armor and improved anti-aircraft capabilities. Finally, we can't but mention the new beautiful Mythical Creatures decals and weapons decorations. We think this time they turned out to be oh so fancy. Dive into the new summer operation, burn stars, Get the new unique vehicles, and if you want to know more about the details of the event, as always, check our official website. Meanwhile, we move to the traditional pages of history. Even before the Second World War started, the German intelligence reported that the US had been well on its way in developing high-altitude planes. 
But when whole armadas of four-engine bombers started raising German cities and factories to the ground, the Luftwaffe forces were incapable of doing anything with them. None of the fighters the Germans had at the time could reach the American B-17s and engage them at those altitudes. The culprit for that devastation was none other than Reich Marshal Göring himself. It was he who straight up banned German aircraft designers from creating high-altitude fighters. Too expensive, he said. We never need them, he said. And all of a sudden, in the middle of 1942, the German command was puzzled. How come we can't down flying fortresses? Make all those engineers drop everything they were doing and create a fighter for us right now. So Kurt Tank got down to business. Now it's important to understand that a high altitude fighter at the time needed three main components. High altitude aerodynamics, a pressurized cockpit, and the most important part, a high altitude engine with a turbocharger. By the end of the 1930s, it had already been done on some American planes, such as the P-43 Lancer and the newer, formidable P-47 Thunderbolt. Kurt Tank was especially inspired by Seversky's idea to take the turbocharger out of the engine and put it behind the cockpit so that the exhaust fumes would have some time to cool down while moving through a long pipe. So why reinvent something? when you could just use all those solutions on an existing Fokker Wolf 190. Giving it a pressurized cockpit and making the wings a bit longer was simple enough. All they needed was a turbocharger, and they found one. Exactly one. In the whole Reich. Why one? Because any turbocharger development had also been banned. And also by Goering's orders. The only prototype was so crude that even those turbochargers that they salvaged from down B-17s worked better in the Luftwaffe labs even after actually falling from the sky. Once they tried to install it on the experimental Fokker Wolf 190C, they realized that it would actually need a whole new plane for it. There wasn't enough space for the cumbersome mechanism inside the compact Fokker Wolf 190. So they had to put it into a large belly sort of pouch, which gave the machine a hurtful nickname, Kangaroo. As for the exhaust pipes, they had to be put onto the sides of the fuselage, which certainly didn't help with the aerodynamics. And even with all those compromises, they just didn't have enough turbochargers. So, Kurt Tank decided to redirect his efforts into solving the problem without them. He used everything he could. The newest inline engines with high-altitude centrifugal superchargers, water methanol injections and even nitrous oxide, which didn't exactly give the plane more speed, but at least it kept the engine from losing power for some time at high altitude. All these engineering tricks and devices resulted in the TAR 152H, a very specialized fighter with the widest possible wingspan. Those wings allowed the plane to glide at high altitudes, but made it useless in any fights below 5 kilometers. Meanwhile, the Thunderbolts ruled the German skies unchallenged easily fighting off most of the German fighters that tried to intercept the Flying Fortresses and the Liberators. They were even quite effective near the ground, paralyzing the Reich wherever they could. The Luftwaffe command and Göring himself were furious, blaming the engineers for their stupidity, blaming the pilots for their cowardice, and blaming fate for, for being so cruel. Göring didn't seem to realize his own mistake. Kurt Tank wasn't eager to explain, uh, and why would he? You asked, we deliver. The top tier helicopters in the triathlon. Please welcome the American, the Japanese, 
and the British Apache Longbow, the German Eurocopter Tiger, and the Russian K-52 Alligator. The first trial will see the pilots compete in maximum speed. The contestants are starting their engines and preparing for takeoff. Go! The machines lift off the ground and start gaining speed. It's 50 kilometers per hour, 100, 200, and we have the Tiger reach its maximum of 280 kph. The American and the British Apaches are next with their speed capped at 310. The Russian K-52 is the one to reach 320, while the leader in this competition is the Japanese contestant with a speed of 340 kilometers per hour. Our next competition will be a time trial with the choppers trying to hit two airborne targets where one will imitate attacking their helicopter and the other one will maneuver trying to dodge rockets. Let's start. The British Apache has automatic optical tracking to guide Star Streak missiles. So, thanks to an instant lock-on and the missile's high velocity, it becomes the first to hit the first target. Next to handle the task is the Car 52 with its Vicher 80 GMs. It took all the other pilots some time to turn on homing devices for their air-to-air -air missiles, so they finished a little later. The Star Street missiles perform considerably worse when shooting at maneuvering targets. Having some difficulty at that stage, the British Apache loses some steam and finishes last. The Car 52's pilot uses Igla missiles this time to handle the target at the same time with the others. The third stage will show which machine performs best as an attack helicopter. The contestants will have to hit four ground targets as quickly as possible and then retreat to safety. For targets, we picked an anti-aircraft gun, an IFV and two MBTs. Let's go! The British crew destroys the lightly armored targets almost instantly since their star streaks can speed up to 1,400 meters per second. A little later, the Car 52 handles them too, thanks to its high-velocity anti-tank missiles. The American and the Japanese helis are the next to report half of their targets destroyed. And while others are still sending their ATGMs at the remaining tanks, the Tiger has already destroyed them and finished the task retreating to cover. The second to destroy all ground vehicles is the helicopter from the Soviet tech tree. The third is the British. The Star Streak missiles helped it outscore the other Apaches yet again, since they are capable of destroying both airborne and lightly armored ground targets. And now, for the fourth stage, the bonus one. Here, we'll have a rocket assault, one of the best things you can do on a helicopter. The participants will have to hit three targets, an IFV and two tanks, and then retreat at ultra-low level altitudes. Our helicopters approach the target, following the landscape. Uh, Go! Thanks to its powerful S-13 rockets and a ballistic computer, the Car 52 is the first to handle the targets and retreat to safety. Others, however, have to spend more time. The German Tiger makes use of its outstanding mobility, circling above the targets and sending its rockets at the thin tank tops. As for the three Apaches, they can easily handle the task with the number of rockets they have, a whopping 76. Now that all targets are destroyed, the rest of the participants retreat to safety and finish. It's time for the summary. The AH Mark I takes third place. 
It's not quite effective against airborne targets, but its four additional rockets help a lot when fighting enemy anti-aircraft guns. The German Eurocopter Tiger takes second place. Its PARS anti-tank guided missiles allow it to engage up to eight enemy at the same time and then quickly retreat out of their sights. And the first place goes to the Car 52. It has a vast arsenal of suspended weapons, with the Wicher 80 GMs being the most universal one, as it can destroy both enemy tanks and aircraft. Now that the triathlon is over, it's time to answer your questions. The first question was sent by a player called Danson. If we didn't log into the game every day, will we lose our daily prizes? Either. If you don't log in for a day, the counter will go back by one. If you miss two days, it'll go back to the closest big trophy and start from there. The counter will reach zero only if you miss three days or more. The Normal Dude 1833 asks, What is the best way to use the Henschel 129 duck? Well, the best way to use it is in mixed battles, which is true for every ground attack aircraft. Once you're in, check the skies around you. This plane's flight characteristics leave much to be desired, so it'll be an easy prey for any fighter. When your team establishes control over the airspace, you can approach enemy tanks at low altitude, attacking their sides and then go around, maneuvering as little as possible because you don't want to lose what little speed you have. Another question comes from Zachary Mayhew. What planes to bring in naval realistic battles? Your plane choice in naval realistic battles depends on the battle rating and tactics. Seaplanes like the A6M2N work well for capturing points. If you expect to attack boats, you'd better use planes with a hefty number of rockets and small caliber bombs. For instance, you can take the American PV-2D Harpoon or the British Firefly FR Mark V. Fighters with more firepower, like the F-6 Hellcat, will be more universal. As for attacking big ships, your best choice would be planes with torpedoes and large-caliber bombs, such as the BTD-1 and the Junkers 288. Alexander Costa writes, Hi! I'd like to say that I'm confused about the BF series because I don't understand how to play with them. Hi, Alexander. The BF Plane family is indeed one of the most challenging series to learn. The Messerschmitt 109 received a more powerful engine with each new modification. That reduced its maneuverability but significantly improved the speed. So, early modifications comfortably perform in dogfights while later ones are better for boom and zoom tactics. If you want to know more about this curious plane family, see our video Climbing the Ranks with German Aircraft. And the last comment today was written by Crew Family. I really like the red and white stripes on the Italian boats. <laughs> oh yeah, we love them too. Looking at the bows brings a Christmas mood for us. In real life, though, they weren't there to create a mood, because this camouflage made it easier for the Italian aircraft to spot friendly ships. That's it for today. You've been watching The Shooting Range by Gaijin Entertainment, and the next episode will premiere the following Saturday at 4 p.m. GMT or noon Eastern Time. Subscribe, please. And click the bell ping if you don't want to miss our next videos. Don't forget to leave a like. <laughs> Enjoy your summer 2020 operation and see you next week.